Guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to drboystv.com, the home for intelligent black people. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins, and uh, I have been reading some really interesting, uh, disturbing, very problematic allegations against Diddy. Um, there are huge financial implications here. This man is worth a billion dollars, according to Forbes. And uh, I'm going to tell you, by the time uh, all this is done, Diddy's net worth could easily be negative. And I'm going to break that down for you. Uh, so get comfortable, buckle up a seatbelt. We're going to get started on drboystv.com right now. Here we are, clan, the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who got to delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to coach side for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn it to intelligence. Please, none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to DrBoyceTV.com, the home for intelligent black people. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. And uh, uh, before we get started, let's do a quick audio check. Give me a yes if you can hear me okay. Give me a quick yes to let me know that I'm coming through all right. Also, let me know what city you're from. Uh, I see Monica Willis and Willetta White. Good to see you. Uh, this is um, an interesting topic. Uh, Diddy is really just, woo, buddy. Diddy uh, has officially become the new Bill Cosby. Uh, Diddy has officially become the new Bill Cosby because the allegations are pouring in like crazy. Uh, Macy's today just dropped him uh, from their website. Uh, also, the lawsuits, just tons and tons of lawsuits with a lot of lot of receipts, um, you know, that uh, are coming through. Now, again, I'm not here to uh, impose or to assume uh, guilt or innocence. Um, again, I still also believe that when things happen, they should be reported right away. I think that the water is very muddy, but this is predictable. This is predictable because I understand hip hop culture very well. I have, I know a lot of rappers. I have been commentating on that culture for a long time. And uh, one of my really good friends who's deep in hip hop, we would always make a joke. We said, wait till the Me Too movement gets to hip hop. Wait till the Me Too movement gets around to all the stuff that's been going on behind the scenes with rappers and artists. Uh, these lawsuits are going to be pouring in like crazy and uh, it's going to be ridiculous. And so uh, let me just kind of give you the latest update on Diddy in terms of what's going on. Then I'm going to talk to talk about it uh, from a couple of perspectives. One, uh, I've been a black man my whole life and I'm I'm, I'm always going to be a black man. So I always see things through the lens of a black man. But then also I'm going to talk about the economic implications. Diddy, uh, my prediction is that Diddy will not be a billionaire or anything close to it after this is done. Uh, my prediction is that they're going to destroy not just all of his current wealth, but his ability really to make money uh, because he's always been a personality driven brand. He's always the party guy and, and he's had a lot of staying power. I mean, he's extraordinarily good at maintaining a, a, a an almost youthful uh, presence. You know, similar to like an Eddie Murphy and people like that, that just seem to never age. Well, it looks like now uh, some of these chickens are coming home to roost and uh, his track record is starting to catch up with him in certain ways. But again, I'm not here to presume innocent or guilt. OK, so I don't want to get into all that. Now, uh, as we move on, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. Please hit that thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, share. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, also, don't forget this podcast is on Spotify and it's on Apple. We had over a million downloads last month. So thank you guys for supporting and being connected to it. Also, my new book, The Ten Commandments of Black Economic Power, is a bestseller on Amazon. Uh, we just put it on Audible. My books are on Audible now. So if you like Audible books, uh, when you want to listen to audio books, you can go to Audible and just look up my name. Uh, or you can go to drboysbooks.com. And for 24 hours, you can get all my books and uh, all the flashcards for kids, everything 75% off for Black Friday. Just use the code Black Friday 2023. Black Friday 2023, all one word at checkout. Okay, so let's hop in and let's dig in. Uh, thank you, Olivia. I appreciate you. I see your comments, sister. God bless you. All right. So here's what uh, is happening. Two things that jumped out at me that was that just really had me thinking like, whoa. Uh, so so here's the deal. So let me tell you about this, Preston Clark. I see you in there. Thank you for your compliment. Um, so so basically two things happened that that uh, in addition to what had already occurred, a lot of people knew about uh, let me see a month ago. Everybody was talking about Tupac. Right. And Diddy's name was kind of coming up a lot in the murder of Tupac. Then. 
uh, it moved into Cassie. Uh, I guess a girlfriend did he had 20 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, something like that. And uh, Cassie sued and the suit it instantly went away. The suit was quickly settled and kind of squashed. Now you're starting to see a little bit of what almost looks like an avalanche. It almost looks like an avalanche from where I'm standing, where now uh, you have uh, a couple of things, uh, a couple of interesting developments. One, Macy's has dropped <clears throat> Sean, John and Diddy pretty much from their brand. They said, look, we don't want no part of this. And this makes sense because honestly, corporations don't like messy. Corporations don't like chaos. They don't like allegations. They don't like uh, ambiguity in terms of whether or not a brand is uh, good or bad. So Macy's has has disassociated with Diddy. I'm willing to bet you that other companies are doing the same thing. I'm willing to bet you that Revolt TV is having a hard time now. I don't even know the, the complexities of the relationships between Diddy and other entities. I know the guys that earn your leisure, who I love. I love those guys. I respect them immensely. I know a few of those guys, Ash Cash and uh, MG, the mortgage guy. I saw him not too long ago. I love the guys that earn your leisure, but I'm imagining the guys that earn your leisure are trying to figure out how to finesse and how to deal with the association with Diddy, which does not look, it doesn't look well on anybody right now. And that's just what it is. Uh, also, you've got this connection with even the Breakfast Club. I don't know exactly how Diddy and Revolt are connected to the Breakfast Club, but it seems like there's a connection there. So, so a lot of business interests are really being affected by these uh, alleged personal choices that Diddy made. Uh, and this is something where I talked about this actually this morning on my podcast, I was talking to you guys about how you cannot disconnect your personal decisions from what happens to you economically and what happens to you in terms of business. Uh, some sort of, um, of, of restraint, some sort of st strategy uh, it must be implied. You can never think that you're too big for anything uh, to ever come back and get you. Now, again, I'm not sitting here saying that, that Diddy uh, that, that Diddy did or didn't do these things. This is not my job. That's not what I'm trying to do here. What I am saying, though, is that it looks like some chickens are coming home to roost. Some allegations are being made. Uh, so the, the drop by Macy's was one thing. But then also there's this crazy article written in the Daily Beast. Now, when the liberals, when the white liberals start writing nasty hit pieces like this about you, that means you're in trouble. Because white liberals don't really like black males in general. They, they definitely don't like straight black males. Now, is Diddy a straight black male? I have no idea. He, he appears to possibly be sexually ambiguous. Again, I'm not even going to get into all that. But still, uh, I think that there is a conflict. It's really interesting, right? And this is something cultural that I want to talk about. There's a conflict between hip-hop culture and white liberal culture, right? There's a part of hip-hop culture that white liberals love. They kind of love watching the black man make a fool out of himself. They like watching the black man throw the party and dance and rap and and, and kind of do the stereotypical thugged out thing. What they don't enjoy is when black men uh, engage in any sort of alleged behavior that is inconsistent with white liberal values. For example, with Diddy, uh, they're, they're probably looking at him. Almost, they're, they're, I think that they're insinuating in this article in the Daily Beast. The title of this article is Diddy and R&B star Aaron Hall took turns raping a woman. Right. That's the title. So they're looking at him like he's a rapist. Right. And this is violence against women. That's a, a big problem. It's a problem for everybody. I mean, I'm, I'm not I, I would never support any form of violence or whatever against women. The conflict, though, is that there are many thousands of black men who've been falsely accused. Uh, and this is this is what creates a complexity in our relationship with white liberals. White liberals, we, we agree that, you know, uh, that, that violence against women is terrible, but they, they also have a lack of sensitivity to uh, to what happens to a black man when he gets falsely accused. And then that's what and then what happens is all your white liberal friends abandon you. Give me a guess if you're following this. I, I know I'm talking a lot. I talk fast. Uh, I, I'll try. I try to slow down, but I got a lot to say. And uh, and a lot of times, your 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 so-called allies will abandon you instantly once you get a certain label on you as a black man, even if it's not a proven label, even if it's not true. Like for example, I remember writing an article years ago where I was warning men about sleeping around with just any old woman. You know, I warned men about chasing a big button to smile. I said, because if you get falsely accused, you're going to be destroyed. I said, there are people out there that will destroy you. There are women out there that will lie. There are women out there who will get drunk and say that you poured the liquor 
finger down their throat and force them to do everything that they chose to do voluntarily because unfortunately we have a contradiction we have on one hand the me too movement says i am woman hear me roar women are equal to men women are strong women can make their own decision my body my choice but then there are other at the same time they they, they come off with this argument that women are basically children that a woman who drinks a lot can't make her own decisions that basically when uh, that she can literally say a man tricked me or coerced me into sleeping with him when the man didn't touch her the man didn't force her the man didn't do anything she agreed to do it Th these are real realities this is what really happens this is this a uh, politically incorrect conversation that isn't allowed in a world that is politically charged and politically divisive, right? The reality is that women are strong. Women are smart. Women can make their own decisions. And also you can't tell me that a, a, a drunk woman is not responsible for her choices, but a drunk man is. Y'all understand what I'm saying? If a man gets drunk and a man says, well, you know, hey, I it wasn't I, I could I, I beat somebody up and I raped somebody or I stabbed somebody. But I wasn't uh, I wasn't able to consent to stabbing anybody because I was drunk. I mean, I was out of my mind. Like, how was I supposed to to know? I, I, I did the drug deal, but I was high at the time. So I can't consent to do a drug deal because I'm I was drunk. I was high. Men can't say that. Men can't say that. So I honestly, again, because I believe in fairness to women, because I believe in equality or to some extent. I believe men and women are different, but I believe in equity. How about the equity? Um, I believe that a woman can make her own choice, just like she can make a choice to abort your baby without your permission, right? They say that women should have that choice, but for some reason, they think women are not capable of making a choice when it comes to her body as it pertains to sexuality, particularly if things did not go right. That's wrong. That's unfair. That's stupid to me, to be honest with you. Now, let's get back to Diddy. I'm not here to say Diddy didn't do this stuff, because let's just keep it 100. Diddy has a reputation. Give me a guess if you're aware of the reputation Diddy has. Give me a guess if you are aware that Diddy, unfortunately, has a 25, 30 year track record of being accused of just dastardly, crazy things. Right. Give me a yes if you understand this. The thing about the thing about the Cassie situation and some of y'all educated me on this and I appreciate you sending me links and all that. There was a lot of stuff in there with the Cassie thing that was like, oh, man, y'all some crazy people. This lifestyle, I don't understand this lifestyle. I don't understand the lifestyle full of the drugs and the liquor and just endless amounts of gluttonous, irresponsible sexual behavior. I don't I don't understand that world. White people, liberal white people introduce you to that world. That's what happened. Hollywood introduced you to that weirdo shit. Black people, regular black people don't do that. Let's just be honest. Regular black people don't have you know, sex where there's like 80 people in the room and everybody's using Molly and Percocet and and and, and people are just, I, seriously, I'm not saying y'all ain't freaky. I'm not saying you haven't done your thing. Everybody, sex is natural. It's okay to like it. Everybody does. But, but, but I'm saying that, tell me, give me a guess if you understand what I'm saying. A lot of people can't relate to y'all's little weirdo Hollywood lifestyle. Black folks, regular black people can't relate to that. And then what they do, though, is they appeal to regular black folks and they're like, like, this is what happened to me. And and this is and this could happen to any woman. And a lot of women are like, I don't identify with that because I would not know I would not be in Vegas chasing down rap stars so I can just sleep with any rapper that will have sex with me. Right. Like they don't understand that. Right. So so the truth of the matter, like just like I can't relate to Diddy. And the foursomes and the the, the 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 men sleeping with the women and the men women sleeping with the men and the men sleeping with each other and I don't get all that. That's crazy to me. And what here's the thing. Here's where that's going. Here's the point. Some of y'all motherfuckers done made a deal with the devil. Seriously, some of these people have made a deal with the devil straight up. I'm not saying this from a religious standpoint. I'm saying it from a practical standpoint. You made a deal with the devil, and and what I mean by that is. Because you you fell into this myth. And I'm, remember, I'm a finance guy, so I know what money does. Money is a drug. Money is it, it affects the brain in crazy ways. So you made a deal with the devil. You thought that because your black ass made a couple hundred million dollars, and because you get to stand in, in an arena full of uh, white people who are cheering for you, and uh, and because you're known around the world, that that means anything goes. That means that there are no limits. That means you can have whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want. That's what you that's what you believe. That's what you and I know it because you rap about it. You rap about all the chaos and the craziness because you think there's no accountability for getting into that weirdo shit. You seriously look at ASAP Rocky right now. Everybody's like, oh, Rihanna's a billionaire. And, and I'm happy for Rihanna. Don't get me wrong. But right now, her baby daddy is this close to going to prison. Have y'all been following this? This guy is on 
like some kind of trial right now. I, I again, maybe I'm wrong. I'm looking, but but there, I'm sitting there thinking <clears throat> your baby mama's a billionaire and you you just had a child and you're about to go to jail, dog. You're about to go to jail. And if I look at your track record, I I I see where you were rapping about this extreme excessive lifestyle where you threw discipline out the window and it, it replaced discipline with, with tremendous amounts of irresponsible excess. Cause that's what happens. That's what happens when you don't know who the hell you are. When you, when your feet are not firmly plant, planted in the ground, you get to the point where you think you are untouchable. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Bill Cosby. Again, I y'all see y'all don't understand. I, I confuse a lot of you because you think that I defend Cosby and you think I don't. And some of y'all think I don't like him. No, I I do both. I do both. On one hand, I, I I think that there was no evidence against Cosby. There there was no reason to send that man to jail. He's an old man anyway. He ain't gonna hurt nobody. Let that man die in peace. Let him sit with his wife where he should have been all along and let him just die in peace. Stop trying to send an old man to jail with no evidence. Y'all some bastards for that. But at the same time. I know, I remember Bill, Cos Bill Cosby 30 years, 40 years ago, hanging out in the Playboy Mansion, doing God knows what, because somebody got him to let his guard down and to believe that anything goes. In a way, if you want to understand it, it's similar. How many of y'all, let me, let me relate it to something that most of us understand. Does anybody have any relatives who warned you that if you get your job, don't go get drunk at the office party like the white people do. Did anybody else grow up in that house where you were told like if they have the Christmas party and all the white folks are getting drunk, you don't do that. You don't, you don't get out there acting a fool swinging from the chandelier. Did anybody else grow up like that? I, I did. I did. When I got my job at Syracuse University, I was a 30-year-old black man making $115,000 a year. My life has suddenly changed. I had more money than I'd ever had in my life. I had a lot of power. I was the only black person on the enti in the entire earth, actually, black male or female, to get a PhD in finance that year. There's no other African-American anywhere. They got that. P so I was hot shit. And one thing my father told me when I went to that campus, is he, he said, don't you fuck nothing on that campus. He said, you better not sleep with no students. He said, you better not sleep with no other professors. You better not sleep with the secretary. If you want to go get some ass, you take you take your ass off campus. There's plenty of women you can meet off campus. But you do anything in that space. You don't shit where you eat. Because if you do, it's going to come back to haunt you. He said that to me. And I thank God for that because there was another professor. His name was Adam Banks. He was the same age as me. He slept with a student. They had his picture slapped up on tv like he was oj simpson they it literally almost like a mugshot and i don't even know if he did anything wrong she but i know that she accused him of sexual misconduct seven months after the relationship ended and i didn't even know what sexual misconduct was i was like is that rape like what is sexual and then they dropped everything <clears throat> but it doesn't matter once they drop the charges it don't matter they're not gonna go back and fix it you're you're, you're tainted you're, you're accused now <clears throat> Now everybody thinks you're, 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 they can't take your, your, your mugshot was already on TV. So, so the point of the matter is I do believe, and, and maybe it's crazy, but I believe y'all get to the point, some of these celebrities, I'm going to be honest with you. I think they get to, to the point where they really trust these folks too much. They do. They, they really think, well, because I'm famous and because I'm rich and because I made a hit rap song that somehow I'm some indispensable Negro who is godlike and in, in, in character and I can walk around and do whatever I want and then do it with white girls too. Okay, you keep doing that, little Emmett Till looking mother. You know, seriously, like, like you, you keep, you keep going, keep going. Chickens come home to roost. And I think with Diddy again, I'm not sitting here accusing Diddy of anything. I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say he did these things. I'm serious. I believe in evidence and proof. And maybe there are some receipts, right? There's some disturbing receipts for sure. But uh, that's not to me. That's not as it's all the entire issue. The, a lot of the issue is that I see a hip hop culture that encouraged black men to engage in, in a highly undisciplined lifestyle that is coming back to bite you in your ass and it's going to bite hard. It's going to bite people like even Jay-Z. You think, do you think there's a reason you, you don't think there's a reason Jay-Z is super quiet about all of this? You don't think there's a reason he hasn't issued a statement? You don't think there's a reason he hasn't come out in the defense of anybody? <sighs> it's 
It's a lot of a lot of dots connecting here. R. Kelly had a lot of friends that would hang out at his house while he was doing debauchery. Y'all do understand that. Michael Jordan would hang out with R. Kelly and they would, you know, play basketball together. I'm not saying that he did these things. I'm not saying that at all. And I'm being very careful. I know people that know Michael, so I'm not accusing anybody of anything. All I'm saying is there's about $10 billion worth of skeletons in the closet. And I, and I use a dollar amount because that's because when they come for that money, they go, that, that's how they get you. They don't, they don't try to send people to prison anymore. They, they're not going to try to send you to jail for something you did. They don't want the justice. They want the money. The lawyers are licking their chops. The Gloria all reds. Well, they got all the legal documents, like all ready to go. And they're already, they're, they're, they're Google searching your net worth. And using artificial intelligence to go back and retrace the last 30 years of your lifestyle. They're going to go look at every Vlad TV interview you ever did, Aaron Hall. And they're going to say, oh, R&B star Aaron Hall took turns raping women according to new lawsuit. Well, guess what? Now you're not you're no longer a fit for corporate America anymore. All your little business deals are dead. Ain't no corporation going to align themselves with somebody who's even where it's even an implication that they might be a rapist. Macy's ain't going to participate with that, Diddy. That's why I, that's why Diddy's no longer with Macy's. Um, but then there's a whole lot of other stuff out there. Uh, some stuff was videotaped. Some stuff was recorded. Some stuff they some guys, some of these guys literally were out snitching on themselves. I mean, I'm not even saying you should have did what you did. I told you that. I told you that's a problem, right? That excessive lifestyle. But then you, you because you're chasing clout and because you think that there are no rules and because you think you can get away with it, you make songs about it. You know, you get on Vlad TV and talk about it. I ain't never seen it. I don't even understand that. Seriously, I, you know, again, common sense. I'm cursed with common sense on this. I don't understand why you d- would do certain things in the first place. But if you do it, keep the shit to yourself. At least that, that's one area I give Jay, Jay-Z credit for. Jay-Z ain't go out here trying to do interviews and talk about stuff that he did back 20, 30 years ago. You know, because there's a lot of accusations against that guy. And I and I, I bet you he's paying attention. I bet he's very, very concerned. You know, and, and the thing is, it's not just guys like, like the rappers. I mean, Bill Clinton, you look at the skeletons in Bill Clinton's closet. You know, like, I mean, it's it's it goes really deep. And, and what's so what's really happening here is you're having a scenario where the legal system is now backing women and it's mostly women suing men. It's not men suing women. Sometimes you know, you're going to have some cases with men suing men. There are some there are there. Those are going to happen. There won't be many cases of men able to sue women, but there will be thousands of cases of women suing men. And the, what, and what was, what's ironic and complicated about these cases is that they, many of them live under the assumption that men are, we are these conniving, intelligent creatures who are sophisticated and capable of doing mind control to manipulate women to do things that they actually chose to do themselves. You know, you if you chose to lay down with a man and get high and engage in sexual debauchery and there's no proof that it was against your consent, then this idea that somehow you were tricked into it, uh, that really makes you into a childlike creature. That makes you a person that uh, is devoid of the ability to be responsible for your choices, which to some extent makes you as bad as the rappers are. Right. So. So uh, anyway, let me move on. I'm going to move on. If you could do me a favor, please hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up, share, subscribe. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. This podcast is on Spotify. Uh, my new book is called The Ten Commandments of Black Economic Power. And also uh, I did write a book called Financial Lovemaking, uh, where I talk about the merge between love and money, relationships and money. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, feel free. You can go to my website at drboycebooks.com for Black Friday. Everything is 75 percent off. So just for one day. So uh, use the code Black Friday 2020. All one word. If you use the code Black Friday 2023 at drboycebooks.com, then you can get everything 75% off. Also, if you want free stuff uh, in the Black Business School, we've helped hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people actually. Uh, if uh, So if you'd like to get some stock picks or things that you can invest in, uh, we send out lots of free stuff. So just text the word stock to 31996. Text stock to 31996. I have a training that's very popular called How to Make Money Without Working. Uh, my PhD is in finance. And so um, feel free to uh, text 
tech stock to 31.996. Hit the thumbs up button, thumbs up, share, subscribe. So let me read a little bit about this Diddy lawsuit. It's very disturbing. It's in the Daily Beast. And they said a third woman has filed a rape lawsuit against the hip hop mogul one week after he settled with ex-girlfriend Cassie. Sean Diddy Combs has been hit with a third lawsuit accusing him of sexual assault, this time from a Jane Doe who says the hip hop mogul and R&B star Aaron Hall took turns raping her and a friend more than 30 years ago. In the New York Supreme Court filing first obtained by Rolling Stone, the anonymous woman claimed she and her friend first met Diddy and Hall at an MCA Records event in New York City. The accuser also names MCA and Geffen Records as additional defendants, having enabled the lawsuits. According to the lawsuit, quote, Combs and Hall were very flirtatious and handsy with Jane Doe and her friend, offering them drinks throughout the night, end quote, before the foursome retreated to Hall's apartment, where Jane Doe was offered more drinks and was coerced into having sex with Combs. After the alleged assault, the lawsuit continues. Jane Doe laid in bed, shocked and traumatized. As she was in the process of getting dressed, Hall barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced Jane Doe to have sex with him. Hall is a member of the R and group B group Guy, which was credited as pioneering the new Jack swing sound in the late eighties and early nineties. Doe claims she fled. She fled the apartment and was later informed by her friend that she too was also allegedly coerced into sex with both men in a separate room. Days later, Doe further alleges an irate Combs came to her home and physically assaulted her. Quote, choking Jane Doe to the point that she passed out. The lawsuit claims Diddy was searching for Jane Doe's friend because he was worried that she would tell the girl he was with at the time that he what he and Hall had done to them. Reps for Combs and Hall did not immediately respond to the Daily Beast request for comment. Combs was named in two other bombshell lawsuits filed just before the end of the Adult Survivors Act, a New York state law which authorized a one-year period wherein alleged victims of sexual offenses that exceeded the statute of limitations could file civil lawsuits. The first of those lawsuits against Combs came from his ex-girlfriend, one-time R&B star Cassie Ventura, who alleged the raper, the, the, not the raper, I said the raper, so that's bad, the rapper and producer of, of, of rape, Wait, producer of rape, physical assault. Oh, they. she alleged that the rapper and producer, she alleged him that, that he participated in rape, physical assault, and a car bombing. Combs lawyer Benjamin Brofman labeled the offensive and outrageous claims to be blackmail. Diddy and Cassie settled the court, settled the suit out of court. But then a day, a week later, a second woman, Joey Dickerson Neal, filed a lawsuit against Combs, accusing him of drugging and raping her when she was a college student in 1991, distributing revenge porn of their encounter. Quote, this last minute lawsuit is an example of how well-intentioned law can be turned on its head. A spokesperson for Combs told the Daily Beast. OK, so um, so this is this is a lot. This is really a lot. And um, and I'm going to stick with this one basic point. I, I believe in things like evidence. Right. I believe evidence is important now. Um, you know, videotape could be evidence. Uh, at least it's evidence that you all got together. Is it evidence that things happened against your consent. I think that's another issue. I think that's another uh, topic. And I think that's what makes it hard, right? That's what makes it difficult because you can imagine, say somebody who is addicted to drugs or looking for money saying, Hey, let me just file this lawsuit. Let me just take history, rewrite history um, of things that allegedly happened, things I did not report to the police, things that I, you know, that I don't have much evidence of. And let's just make the accusation and make it public and, and they'll know that their reputation will be ruined. So, um, you know, they'll pay me to make this go away. Right. Will Smith actually said he keeps uh, eight lawyers on uh, retainer just to deal with all the lawsuits that get filed against him that are frivolous, et cetera. Right. However, there's the other side of this. Right. The other side of this says. That um, that these things do happen, that these excesses do take place, that there are people who think that they are above the law. Uh, there are many people who have claimed that uh, that they felt and that did he felt for many years that the police would never investigate him for anything because he was connected to important people in the city like the mayor and Donald Trump and many others. There are also there's also so so let's 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 move away from this a little bit in terms of the he says she says side of it right you everybody's got opinions those opinions should be respected i think all the nuances should be considered uh, i think there needs to be a standard here uh, if there's no standard then you're opening the floodgates anybody can sue anybody and get paid just because they made a choice that they regret and they want to try to find a way to profit from it 25 30 years later right but there's a more practical aspect of this about the protection of wealth and what in the, the precarious situation that Diddy finds himself in. 
Diddy is basically in a situation that reminds me of something that I heard from one of my students when I taught a finance class in China. One of my Chinese students, I was talking to them about Chinese culture. Now, Chinese culture is very different from hip hop culture. In fact, most Chinese people, in my view, they think rappers are kind of goofy. They really do. They think rappers are goofy. And the reason they think they're goofy is because uh, in Chinese culture, you get laughed at if you are uh, loud and cocky. If you're standing out like, look at me, look at me. If you're clout chasing, attention seeking and trying to stand out from the group, that is not seen as a positive favorable attribute right so uh like last last year you know when i was on the phone with kanye west all you know for many many hours first thing kanye tells me is that he's going to be president in 2024 that he is the most important person on the earth next to vladimir putin and i'm sitting here thinking why the fuck are you telling me these things i don't give a shit you're, you're another black man on the phone with me right now i'm not bragging and saying and talking about my phd and how much education i have if you ask me, I'll talk to you about it to qualify myself, but I'm not here to talk about how I'm better than you. Like, that's very weird to me. Just shut up. This is stupid to me. And so so that culture, that doesn't fit. Like, if you go to China, they do the opposite. They try to blend in with the group. And I said, where did that come from? And she said that when we were little, we were told that the fattest pig always gets slaughtered. Now, what does that mean? And how does this relate to Diddy? Well, right now, Diddy is the fattest pig and everybody's showing up like Thanksgiving dinner with their little knives and forks out. You, you don't think, give me a yes or no, if you understand this, you, know, do, you don't think that every lawyer in New York that's trying to get paid, that's trying to get on the map, that's trying to get something for their clients, you don't think every single lawyer in New York is not salivating at the idea of filing a hundred million dollar lawsuit against Diddy. For some shit that he put on videotape. Give me, let me know if y'all understand where I'm coming from. Again, I'm not sitting here talking about guilt or innocence. Let's not get into that. But I told you, I don't, I don't know Diddy. I don't know him like that. Um, he's a he support, he called, you know, y'all know how I love Dr. Claude Anderson. Diddy called Dr. Claude Anderson. Me and Dr. Anderson were talking about Diddy the other day. He said Diddy didn't do anything. He just I told you that's what rappers do. They talk, but they don't do anything. Ice Cube did something. I put Dr. Anderson on the phone with Ice Cube. Ice Cube and I got together and and made a financial, uh, financially supported what Dr. Anderson was doing. And I said, I know you're a famous celebrity. I don't want your money. I'll put up half. You put up half. I'll match you dollar for dollar for everything you can help me do for Dr. Anderson's Institute, because this is helping black folks. Cube came through. Diddy did not. No disrespect, but that's just what it was. So I don't dislike Diddy. I really don't. But 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 I'm telling you that what it is. And, and this is this comes with the territory. This comes with fame. This comes with money. So so what's interesting. Here's the thing. White folks will trick you, trick your black ass, your black rapping ass, into thinking that your fame and fortune makes you invincible. I believe it's the opposite. I believe that your fame and fortune makes you more vulnerable than ever. I think that your fame and fortune makes you the fattest pig that's about to get slaughtered when they get a hold of your ass. That's what I believe. I believe that, 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 Every lawyer in New York who knows any of the many hundreds of women that Diddy has interacted with is, is trying to figure out, like, hey, well, did he do anything inappropriate? Is there anything? Right now, they're right, they're giving away free money right now because the, the courts have no standard right now. Right now, the floodgates are open. It's just like the, during the pandemic when they were giving everybody PPP money and, and there was free money, right? There's free money being given out for any woman who slept with a rapper over the last 20 or 30 years, and, and if that rapper still has any of his money, if he ain't tricked all his money away, because that's what some of them do, because it's, again, bad culture, but for the ones that didn't trick their money away, let's go file this lawsuit. Let's go get paid. Because I'm going to tell, tell you, now that I think about it, you don't think Jay-Z going to get a lawsuit at some point? I'm not putting it on him. I'm not wishing this. I'm just asking you. You don't think Jay's going to get any, I mean, he's, he's been on the scene in New York for 30 years. You don't think there's some woman that he did wrong. Somebody mad at him, some situation that was ambiguous, some that involved drinking and drugs. 
where she could say, well, I, 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 he, I didn't, he made, he, he coerced me into getting drunk so that he could sleep with me, which technically makes it a non-consensual sex. And, and because the world isn't going to take the time to figure out who did what, I'm going to get a check just to make it go away, which would be great because since that time, I'm not doing so well financially. And I know you're doing well because you're the fattest pig. You got all this money and you're on TV. So you're very wealthy and you're fine. Right. I, I, I mean, really, this is so, so, so don't think that Diddy's the last one. That's the interesting thing. The Me Too movement has arrived to the world of hip hop and they're going to come in there and they're going to drain the swamp. And what they're going to do is they're going to go back and with a fine tooth comb and look at every single. It's funny that Diddy's last name is Combs, right? They're going to do a fine tooth comb <laughs> and they're going to go through and they're going to dissect carefully the last 30, 35 years of, of every rapper's life. And what is on what is really challenging is that there are many um, artists who have done things that, you know, are kind of hard to explain to the general public. They're going to be hard to explain. And uh, and so so, you know, so remember that this is this is not you could talk about this in a way where you're not victim blaming. You could talk about this in a way where you're not assuming that celebrities are all guilty or innocent. Right. You, you don't, you know, because again, it's a wild world. It's a wild culture. You know, I, I don't think anybody knows um, what it's like, you know, for guys. Like, remember when, uh, who was that that had that song? I got hoes in different area codes, in area codes. Remember Dame Dash? Dame is a friend of mine. Uh, remember Dame and Jay Z had that song? What was it? Big Pimp and Spin and Cheese. We be big pimp and and uh, and then they they were rapping about or maybe Dame Dash and maybe Jay Z had that song holes in different area codes or was that a Jay Z song I can't remember, but my point is to say that this is this is that rock star lifestyle this is the lifestyle that they were given and some of these guys I think got carried away with this because they didn't know was it Ludacris or Nate Dogg I don't remember I don't but I but but you know songs like that songs like that y'all gotta forgive me I get them mixed up I get them they all mashed together because they all sound alike uh but generally speaking that's what's interesting right now is because is that you have a world where I think that there are people who kind of forgot that they were black I think I really do I think that there were guys who really went into that whole like OJ Simpson did that remember when OJ was like I'm not black I'm OJ uh, I think that there, that artists kind of got to the point where they thought they could do things and get away with stuff forever. And, and what happens is that when it comes to going after black people, they change the rules. Like with Bill Cosby, you know, OJ, first of all, OJ Simpson probably killed his wife. I believe that he did, but they didn't have the evidence. And what you don't understand though, is that you're dealing with a man who can, change the rules whenever he wants to. So they said, well, we ain't got evidence, but we know this Negro did it. So we're going to treat him as if he actually did it. I, again, I don't think OJ is a great guy. I think OJ probably did it, but you can't prove it. But it, but you think the system is fair to you. You think the rules apply to you in, in the same way they apply to everybody else. They don't. They don't. You're not white. You're, you're not white. Um, same thing is true, I think, when you talk about Bill Cosby. Look, did Bill Cosby do some of the things he's accused of? I think he probably did, to be honest with you. I think Bill Cosby uh, made a lot of choices, but they changed the rules for Bill Cosby. They were like, well, normally we don't we wouldn't go after a criminal 30, 40, 50 years later, but we're going to do it now because he's a rich Negro and we don't like that very much on a subconscious level. We actually hate you and don't think you deserve the wealth that you have. So we're going to go ahead and use this as a moral justification to do to you what we've done to damn near every black family since slavery, which is to go after you using the law uh, in our favor to come and take everything that you have, Black Wall Street where laws were manipulated because a black man was accused of touching a white woman and they used their own laws and, and they deputized white men to go over and, and fix the problem, right? And fixing the problem meant burning down every black person's house, killing hundreds of people, running them out of town and taking their stuff, right? That's kind of what happens in this country. It still happens to this day. The difference with black celebrities and rappers is they think that those rules don't apply to them until they get their Paul Mooney nigga wake up call. When the Paul Mooney wake up call arrives, then suddenly you're like, oh, my God, I'm black. 
I need the black community to help me. By that time, it's too late. But it's by that time you're done. By the time, you know, you don't got 80 years in prison or whatever it is. So so I think that 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 they're not just going to go after the money. I think eventually they're going to start trying to put people in jail. Uh, I, I've seen and, and, and some of these are pe- pe- people that I know who, you know, I, I never had bad interactions with them. I told you I worked with Russell Simmons on some stuff back in 2013. He was a very stand up guy. I, I And I didn't know anything about the hip hop lifestyle. Um, I wasn't involved in any of that. I wasn't around in that world, but I like, but but I knew Russell knew celebrities, and we made a partnership to get Ob- force Obama and and Eric Holder to change their incarceration policies, and it actually worked. Uh, that letter's out there somewhere. I wrote the letter. Russell got the celebrities to sign it, and it worked like a charm. And a lot of celebrities signed that letter, and we got a lot of people out of jail with that. And I'm really proud of that work. And and he was honorable in every single step of the way. But then when I see Russell on an interview. And Russell says, man, back then we would get on, on, a, on off a plane in Amsterdam and we would just say we're, we were looking for two things, the pussy and the cocaine. And I was like, I don't I don't I like I mean, pussy, you know, that's I mean, come on. That's, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I ain't got to say nothing else. But the cocaine. So you you're comfortable enough to go and get high and drunk around these people where they can document what your behavior is so they can use that against you later on. I was raised in a world where you're told to be careful about what you do. I I had the parents that said, don't get drunk at the office party with the white folks. I had the father who said, don't go in, in, when you be, when, when I became a professor at Syracuse, he said, don't go fuck nothing on that campus. That's the world, the world I came from, but you live in a different world, man. That's too wild for me. Because the other thing too, is that remember black men are already vulnerable. They're already trying to kill you every way imaginable. They want you dead or in jail or marginalized. That's the goal, right? So the idea that somehow you've let hip hop culture, some parts of it, not all of it, some of it convince you that it makes sense for you to be high and drunk all the time. And which would make you vulnerable because you're not even in your right mind. You're not alert. You're not able to be strategic. You're not able to make good choices. Well, that you're pretty much kind of signing yourself up for slaughter. You literally are like laying your head on the guillotine and saying, okay, chop my head off. You know, and and and, and I, I just never understood that. Right. But again, it happens when you get into that space because I know I think that there are literally rappers who believe racism doesn't exist. I think Lil Wayne was talking about that. He was talking about how nice white people are to him. And I said, of course, they're nice to you because you're Lil Wayne and you fulfill all the stereotypes of black men that they that they believe and they like that. And, and you sound good when you do it. So, of course, they they love you. Of course, they treat you different. I'm the dangerous one. I'm the one who who gets <laughs> who gets banned from Instagram. I, I lost my five hundred thousand followers because because uh, because I'm talking about this stuff that I talk about. About now, I talk about racism. It, you know, if I was talking about toting a gun and shooting other black people, I'm sure they probably put me in the algorithm. I don't know, but anyway, either way, though, you know, they just live in a different world from the rest of the black community. Okay, and 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 I really think that what is going to occur is that you're going to see more of these suits filed. I think other states are going to do the same thing. Uh, I think a lot of artists that have been around for at least 20 years or more are probably shaking in their boots because there are probably things that occurred, particularly while they were under the influence of drugs or alcohol that are going to come back to haunt them. And the difference between being a man in this country and being a woman in this country is that for some reason, somebody decided that women are not responsible for sexual choices they make while they are drunk or while they are high, but men are completely responsible for every choice that they made while they were drunk or while they were high. And this, if you want to know, ladies and gentlemen, why I have an anti-drug anti-alcohol policy that's exactly why because i don't know what kind of man i don't know what kind of beast i'm already crazy enough when i'm not drinking or not using drugs i have no idea what kind of man i would be if i was walking around my household drunk and high i don't know what embarrassing thing i would do so 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 when these artists are being paid by these white and jewish record label owners to 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 to, to go out and promote drugs and alcohol particularly to young black men who have not learned discernment who have not learned intelligent decisions making who have not learned any form of discipline on a significant level that is a recipe for disaster that is a recipe for death that is a recipe for incarceration that is a recipe for misery and and I, and, I, and if i gotta be the only black man on the internet who's saying these things then so be it i'll take the darts throw them at me i'm i'm ready i i, I can take all of that i ain't scared so 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 i i'll say this look 
before I move on, could you do me a favor, please, and hit the thumbs up button? I got to stop and ask you all to do this because it helps because all my channels, channels, because I talk about white people and stuff, they get shadow banned and everything. So I need y'all's help. So if you could like hit the like button or something and uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell, that would really help a lot. Also, uh, we, uh, we, we're moving away. As I told you, it was real. I really did lose 500,000 followers on Instagram. I have a new Instagram. It's Dr. Boyce Finance. And don't worry, uh, we got millions of followers on other platforms, so I'm going to be fine. But, uh, but if you want to uh, connect with us offline, off of Facebook, off of Instagram, we created our own Black-owned social media platform called B1 Nation. Uh, B, it's B, the number one, B1Nation.us, not .com, B1Nation.us. If you come in, there are three quick questions you have to answer so we can make sure sure that you're one of us. Uh, and if you answer those questions, we will let you in. You can network with other intelligent black people from all around the world. So feel free. That's a little space we created uh, for you guys. Also, my book is The Ten Commandments of Black Economic Power and also Financial Love Making. Either one of those books, you can get a copy at drboycebooks.com. For Black Friday, you can get everything 75% off. Just go uh, type, use the code um, Black Friday 2023, all one word, Black Friday 2023. We also have financial flashcards for children that we developed in the black business school financial workbooks for your kids because uh, we have some simple core beliefs here we want black people to be healthy uh, we want black people to be wealthy we want black people to have good relationships that's what we want we want you to be mentally and physically healthy we don't want you doped out we don't want you depressed we don't want you angry at each other we don't want you hating each other we want you to be physically healthy we don't want you dying from cancer diabetes strokes and everything else i mean they all these things are preventable we want you to be wealthy we want you to have cash flow and 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 financial security we don't want you to to endure financial trauma right that's passed from generation to generation we also want you to have good relationships we want black men to love black women and if you don't love the woman next to you then find one that you can love we want black women to love black men we want all of us to show up for each other i i hope that's okay i hope that makes sense it's real simple it ain't it ain't calculus it ain't rocket science so this is what we stand for this is what we believe so if you're in this category i hope you'll be loud and vocal about this because we got to fight against the culture we really do i think as a community we got to stand up and say enough is enough this is some bullshit. We're not going to let you come in here and tell us that we're something other than what we're supposed to be. And, and I think, <clears throat> honestly, unfortunately, hip hop culture, some of it, not all of it, some of it has betrayed us. It's betrayed us. Hip hop started off as a voice of the streets. Hip hop was a voice of the people. Hip hop was a voice of the oppressed. Hip hop was was was, you know, the black CNN where we can find out what's going on in our communities, where we can get politically mobilized, where we can pick up the right ideas from each other. But unfortunately, somebody came along, wrote a check. Again, this is where the, my financial background comes into play. I know exactly how it happened. Somebody came along, wrote a damn check and then distracted you from the mission. They distracted you from the mission. First, you had the gangster rap coming in. We don't love these hoes, and 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 we will, I want to kill a black man today. I feel good because I murdered three Negroes today. Right? That one guy in a verse, he said something like, "I shot four brothers." Like, why would you? Why would you say in a song that you shot four brothers? Like, why is that a good thing? I don't understand. I thought killing black people was bad. Is that maybe am I am I old fashioned here? I thought that we didn't want people killing black people, but you just had a verse where you said I shot four brothers, and that and because it sounds good, I'm supposed to go along with that. And then here's the other thing too. The other thing about hip hop that's really interesting. I remember go listen to this song. This is crazy. Not I'm not really putting this out there on. Uh, on Snoop, because I think Snoop has evolved and become a different man over time, and and he's he's a smart guy, and I like him. But there's a song, I kid you not, <laughs> a song with with Snoop and Exhibit. And if you know hip hop, you probably know this song. And remember the verses like, "Who wanna get involved with us? Break down, blah blah, then da da da." And that that was the chorus. And I don't remember the lyrics exactly, but I remember I could have sworn that there was a verse in this song where the man little where, where Exhibit and Stoop were rapping about um rape, raping somebody, raping a woman and recording it and, and getting away with it, like literally getting getting like like beating the case because they're so powerful. They, I, and again, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I followed the hip hop. I'm, you know, I'm a hip hop head. I know what I know the culture. Right? I've been on the Breakfast Club a bunch of times. All that. I, I study the culture like you study, you know, anything else. Like you study mathematics. I, I pay attention. And let me tell you, <laughs> if this was on any level, how these guys were really living, 
just wait till those lawyers get a hold of that information. Wait till the lawyers talk to the women that were involved. It's going to be over. You're going to see $100 million verdicts. You're going to see billion dollar fortunes disappear like that. That's what you're saying. Diddy's Diddy's the first of many. This is this ain't over. You are gonna watch every day. <laughs> this going and I'm not, I'm not laughing. It's just I'm laughing, but I'm not. I mean, I'm sad. It, I don't like it. It makes me sad. You know, like I, I'm the you know I'm the guy who twenty something years ago was looking at R. Kelly saying this ain't gonna end well for this dude. Like this dude, so he need he don't need another record deal. He needs therapy. He does not need uh more money. He needs somebody to shut his ass down. He doesn't need more people, more yes men around him. He needs some no men around him. You need people around you that are going to slow your roll and keep you humble. But unfortunately, we we literally, the culture has gotten so bastardized in certain areas that we think that even being humble is a bad thing. I saw I saw somebody do a whole post saying, say, why do you want to be humble? It's stupid when people tell you to be humble. And I'm like, but you can be humble and still be confident. I'm very confident. I'm really confident. I really am. I don't pretend to be confident. I really am. I really am as confident as I pretend to, as, as I claim, as I seem to be, as, as much as I tell you, like when I stand up and I say, that's bullshit. I don't like it. But no, I really, because I love Boyce and I'm okay with who he is. Um, But I'm also, I try my best to be humble. And when I'm not humble, you know, then that, 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 that makes you vulnerable. Right. And, and, and we, we all fall victim to that. But at the same time, I would encourage you like, like humility Will protect you, and I think R. Kelly could have used some humility, but instead, I would see every year a new album coming out where every album he would push the limits of mass marketing, various forms of borderline illegal sexual debauchery. That's what he did. That's what he did. Again, I'm not saying that the man deserved all the stuff that he did because, in fact, if you want to keep it 100, <clears throat> um. The people who made that documentary, Surviving R. Kelly, I'm not going to say no names because I don't want to get involved in all this stuff. But I know enough to know enough to know enough that even the people who made the documentary have their own demons and their own skeletons to hide. Right. So so this was you know, I did I didn't fall for the, the Surviving R. Kelly documentary, not because I think R. Kelly is a choir boy, but because I don't like things that are painted in black and white. Right. I, I don't. I did. I didn't like the. I didn't like the motivation behind it. I didn't like the way it was kind of laid out. Um, I think that there that there's a much broader conversation that should be had to understand exactly what was going on, because R. Kelly wasn't the only one. And there were people, uh, male and female, who did some things that they should have to answer to as well. But we don't live in that world. We live in a simplified world. Bad guy, good guy, women, good men, bad. And that and that becomes the end. That's but that's not the case. However, with R. Kelly. I think R. Kelly needed help. You know, I think that R. Kelly could have been a wonderful force for good in the world, just like DMX. Um, R. Kelly, that's what they needed. They needed to, if I could do, <clears throat> excuse me, if I could do things the way I really wanted to do them, I would go back in time and I would, if I had infinite power or the trust of these guys, I would force them to go spend time with Louis Farrakhan. And I would force them to listen to the values of, of men, and, men and women in the, in the nation of Islam. Because those values are the ones that are going to help you live. Those are the values that are going to help you grow. Those are the values that are going to help you be successful. Those are the values that are going to help you harness this amazing amount of power that you have and not use it to destroy yourself. You understand? So if I control a nuclear weapon and I don't position that thing in the right way or I point that missile in the wrong direction, I'm going to kill myself. Do you understand? I'm going to kill myself. And and the amount of power these guys have, and I'm gonna throw in um Kanye West in this category because I worry about Kanye. When I was on the phone with him, I was I, I I just I said, Man, I wish this guy would I wish I could get him to listen to me a little more. He did, he wasn't he listened a lot, he listened a lot. That's why we were on the phone for so long. And and then I lost him. I lost him, but I said, you know, if you were smart, you would listen to me because I think I understand exactly what a big chunk of your problem is. And, and I, I did say that I, I said to, to Ye, I said, you know, <clears throat> I never would have married a Kardashian because I think that that's a destruction point for black men. And I think that what you're going through is, is a reflection of everything that I would have predicted. I don't think that's a healthy family. I said, that's why I married a woman who's just like Donda. You know, your 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 mother was a black woman and a professor who lived in the south side of Chicago. My wife is a black woman and a professor 
from the south side of Chicago. Like she's actually from Gary, but she lived on the south side of Chicago. So, so there's similarities there in terms of picking the kind of woman that's going to hold you down versus picking the type of woman who's going to take you places that are going to get you hurt, that are going to put you in a bad situation, you know, or, or, or dealing with the woman who's going to protect you versus the woman who's going to exploit you, you know? And, and, and I, I, I just personally think that these guys get to the point, I think Diddy, maybe Kanye, I don't know, R. Kelly, DMX, they get to the point where it becomes all about pussy and drugs and money and fans and, and next thing you know, you're sitting with, you know, white folks from, you know, from the Jewish community who are going to make money from you because they own the record label and you're disconnected to all the things that keep you grounded. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're disconnected from the wisdom that comes from being around people that really love you and really want what's best for you. you, you you're disconnected from the people that are going to help you, who are going to push you to modify your behavior so you can really show up as an asset to the black community instead of a liability or, or a wasted asset, right? Some of these Negroes get so disconnected that they, they, be, they, they are worthless to the black community. You know, I was really happy that Umar Johnson made his point where he said that we've had all these rap, we have, we've had hip hop for 50 years and we ain't seen a black hospital. We ain't seen no black owned hotels. We ain't seen them build no school systems, <laughs> right? It's just a bunch of big shiny Negroes sitting on TV and they're so disconnected that we don't even get to see them. Even Bill Cosby was disconnected from the black community until he needed us again. He was pretty disconnected. Not completely though. He did a lot of good stuff. He gave money to Spellman uh, and I saw him do some good things. But for the most part, I'm sitting there thinking, how is it? Pay attention now. How is, isn't it crazy? Pay attention now. This is strange. You have one of the most well, the one of the wealthiest, most successful black men in American history, and there are white women with with a GED that can get more money out of him and get more attention from him than the black community from which he came. There are there are there are broke ass, drug addicted snow bunnies who got more money out of Bill Cosby than. Spelman University did. Does that not disturb you? Does that not make you a little bit concerned? Does that not make you say, what the hell is going on right now? Like, seriously, like, like I, I mean, you know, I, I don't, I don't understand it. I just don't get it, you know? And um, so, so, you know, chickens come home to roost. Uh, Diddy's chickens are here. Uh, it's going to be a, a tough role for him. More lawsuits are coming. I can I can smell the lawyers ink pens all writing down all the facts of the case. I can smell all the 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 parade of of women and men and men. I believe there's going to be some there's going to be a man this fight. Some there will be a man. I believe that there sorry. I believe that there will be some man that will file a suit against Diddy because y'all know what it is, you know, seriously. And no disrespect. I mean, he can do whatever he wants, but seriously. It's going to be a mess for him. And, and his whole legacy is in jeopardy. His generational wealth is in jeopardy. Uh, he's going to have to fight like hell to defend himself. Because the, the other thing, too, that tends to happen that I've noticed is that once you're no longer the popular guy that everybody loves and they flip you into that space where you are public enemy number one and the greatest villain in America, it becomes a lot harder for you. Um, Cosby went through it. Uh, R. Kelly went through it. I think that uh, Diddy is officially the new Bill Cosby. And uh, and so this Daily Beast hit piece about him getting with Aaron Hall and raping women together, that's the beginning. Just watch. There's going to be an avalanche of suits and negative publicity. And I'm curious to see how he does business going forward. It's going to be a mess. All right. So anyway, guys, that's it. That's my two cents. That's my analysis. and I'm sticking to it. Uh, if I'm wrong, then so be it. It's OK. You feel free to leave the comments and let me know where I might want to think about something else. Uh, also, if there's something else I should cover on this platform, you can just put it right there in the comments of the chat. Uh, and or you can even email my manager, uh, manager at voicewalkins.com. Feel free to send her something and uh, she can forward it to me, manager at voicewalkins.com. And if you want to get my two cents on something uh, i'd love be happy to do that and also i'm going to get back um later on and we're going to do some financial stuff uh pure financial stuff this is financial actually very financial but i'm also going to talk about the stock market and all that we do that every day so i uh, hit that thumbs up button thumbs up share subscribe 
Also, my new book, uh, it's a bestseller on Amazon. It's called The Ten Commandments of Black Economic Power. You can get a copy on Amazon or Audible. Or if you want to get 75% off, uh, you can go to drboycebooks.com. For 24 hours, you can get 75% off. Uh, just use the code word um, uh, Black Friday 2023. Black Friday 2023, all one word. And uh, if you go to drboycebooks.com, you can get discounts on that and anything else that you see on the site. And uh, last but not least, if you'd like for me to text you a list of AI stocks that I like, as well as our $5 a day investing plan. All this is for free. Just text the word stock to 31996. Text stock to 31996. So be good to each other. Love each other. Love yourselves and uh, stay black, y'all. I'll see you soon. Peace. Here we are, clan, the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co sign for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn it to intelligence. Please, none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are.